Uh, good uh, morning, everyone. Welcome to our uh, autumn series of webinars. Uh, we are happy to see you here again. And after our short webinars during uh, summer, we prepared a lot of great content for this year's autumn. And today we will start uh, with our first topic, uh, which is uh, reinforced concrete ledge beams uh, via CSFM. So. Uh, for the users of Idea Statica, you know that it's in application detail. Who is presenting today? Uh, my name is Jan and I'm consultant and I'm here with my colleague Petra Komarkova, our product engineer. Petra, can you hear us? Hello, everybody. Yes, uh, I can hear you. Great. Okay, uh, for those of you who are here for the first time and who are not uh, used to it, uh, sorry, with uh, uh, go to webinar, you can uh, ask questions using the question window on the right. So do not hesitate to ask, to put some remarks there, and we will answer your question at the end. Okay, uh, let's go to the agenda. Uh, firstly, uh, there will be some uh, introduction about the topic, about the indirect supported corbels and brackets. Then uh, Petra will show you uh, how to assemble the CSFA model, so how to define the geometry, uh, supports, uh, reinforcement, and all the important stuff. So you can check the uh, check the model. Then uh, we will see you how to check and how to interpret the results in Idea Static uh, detail. And the last uh, but not least will be the comparison of uh, CSFM and Strat and Tie model. Because uh, many of you know uh, the Strat and Tie model and use them in your daily uh, practice. Okay, so now uh, Petra will take the presentation and show you uh, the more about the theory and the application itself. So Petra, it's yours now. Okay, so I will switch off my camera. And <clears throat> share the screen. So I hope that you see the right screen. So, Honza, thank you for a nice intro. So, let's jump to the topic, which is um, indirectly supported corbels. First of all, let's um, speak about the difference between direct and indirect support. As you can see in this picture, uh, the problem is uh, that if uh, the transverse beam uh, is supported at the bottom edge of this longitudinal beam, um, it is um, indirect support and we need to transfer uh, the reaction occurring here to the upper um edge of this longitudinal beam so that's the that's the problem of this uh indirect support and it could be seen at the core bells for example which is today's topic a uh, short um intro about types of core bells uh so we have uh, several um uh, types of the core bells Let's start at the right side. Uh, we distinguish between short span and long span, uh, long span corbels. <clears throat> I'm sure that uh, most of you know that uh, while at the short span corbel, uh, the horizontal reinforcement is the important one. On the other hand, uh, for the longer corbels, we need to uh, design the vertical ties. Uh, then we have a uh, difference between the position of the loads. Uh, so we can have this direct um, position of loadings or indirect, which is uh, similar to indirectly supported corbels. And as a last uh, distribution, we have a, a direct and indirect support corbels and this is the case we are um, interested in today we can discuss um, several types of uh, corbels which are indirectly supported uh, as a first we have a local corbel 
uh, in the past we had a webinar for local corbels. These ones are um, stressed uh, by a huge load because you, you can imagine that you need to transfer all loads from the transverse direction to this small part or small region of concrete. Uh, then we have a multiple corbels uh, depicted here at the right side. Uh, so then we design inverted T-beam and it could be loaded uh, symmetrically or non-symmetrically at both sides. In this case, a little bit more uh, difficult. Uh, so let's leave this problem for the next webinar, for example. And for today, we are um, uh, we're gonna talk about a continuous uh, ledge beam or L-shaped beam and uh, we will go through the workflow. So as I said at the beginning, the problem is that we need to transfer the reaction to the upper edge of the uh, ledge beam. So we cannot forget that the stirrups need to um, safely transfer longitudinal shear and torsion and plus the tension from the solution of the transverse direction. But uh, before we go to uh, the practical part of this webinar, uh, let me um, start yep. the a little survey we prepared for you. So, Jan, okay, could uh, you please? Yes. Thanks, Petra. Uh, yeah, we want to know uh, who is uh, watching our webinar and uh, how do you deal with this uh, type of uh, engineering tasks. So uh, I would like to ask a question. How do you design and check indirectly supported corbels or ledge beams? So I'm launching the poll and I, it would be great if you can uh, vote or tell us how do you uh, do it. Do it. Uh, you can use a start and time method uh, with combination of uh, spreadsheets or manually. Uh, you can use uh, idea static detail. And you may use other software which is like specialized for this task or you can use uh, 3D complex uh, analysis uh, find elements like ANSYS, Athena, Nastran and similar or you don't have to maybe some of you don't uh, analyze such a problem so please uh, vote if you cannot click on it uh, it's, it's uh, good to have it in a full screen then you can select uh, an option so I will give you 10 more seconds. Okay, we are getting your answers. So I would ask the, the last of you and I'm closing the poll right now. And let's share the results. Okay, so three quarters of you are using the classic strat and time method in combination of uh, with Excel spreadsheets or manually and uh, like 17% you don't analyze such a problem but this webinar can be also interesting for you uh, because you may apply this on other uh, regions and uh, only small margin of you use idea statica detail or other software so I've I believe for most of you this will be very uh, interesting webinar and you can get a lot of information how to efficiently design and code check such a engineering task so thank you for your votes and i'm hi hiding uh the poll and petra will continue with the demonstration thanks okay thanks for your voting quite interesting results so let's um uh discuss uh the beam so we're gonna design a, a l-shaped beam a so called ledge beam in a longitudinal direction in Idea Statica Beam, uh, which is an application where a classical theory, classical beam theory is uh, implemented. And then in the next step, uh, we are gonna uh, concentrate on the transverse direction and uh, we will check the tension in the stirrups and use CSFM, uh, which is a method uh, compatible stress field method implemented in Idea Statica detail. So 
I've already prepared the longitudinal direction, the solution of longitudinal direction. Uh, I only uh, comment this uh, project, uh, what is important to do. So as a first, it is uh, important to set this task for uh, 3D as a beam loaded in uh, uh, 3D because uh, we need to uh, define the loads in a in some extent extrans, ex, eccentricity <laughs> sorry uh, so this is our cross section l shape a cross section with these dimensions concrete uh, c4555 it is uh, if we click on the member this is the member uh, we have support it's simply supported beam fixed in a in a torsion in a, at, at the ends uh, then we have three load cases self-weight uh, permanent load and uh, variable load and as you can see this load is acting on the eccentricity i'm going to switch to line loads here we have uh, the values and if i change the point of view you can see that it is not in the center of the of this beam but this position uh, corresponds to uh, the position of for example some transverse beams or panels so then we did some combination according to the code 610 for ULS uh, assessment and then we have uh, of, we have to also assess the structure for serviceability limit states. So after the analysis, we get results. I switch to this view. So this is the bending moment diagram. Uh, and for example, this is the diagram of the shear forces, uh, which we are interested in. Uh, so let me switch to concrete design, part reinforcement. And since this is a continuous corbel, uh, I'm going to uh, design only this part of this beam, uh, five meter. And at the ends, uh, let's leave this area for a different type of analysis, because in this uh, regions, it would be directly supported corbel. So at this, uh, or right now, I'm interested, I'm interested in this green part. So this is the uh, longitudinal reinforcement and, and the stirrups. And if we look at the detailed results, we can check uh, the most utilized section, which will be probably at uh, the distance one meter from the support. So uh, we have it here. Uh, we have some shear force and uh, torsion moment. So I go to results. And so here we have the check for shear and torsion. And the interaction check is the one who is the most utilized. And as we can see here, interaction check of shear and torsion, shear reinforcement, we can see that there is 72%. So uh, there is some uh, re reserve for uh, transverse uh, direction. So uh, right now it looks good and I think it will satisfy um, if we add uh, the effects of indirectly supported corbel. So uh, I'm going to close this uh and right now is the time for launching detail application so i start from uh idea statica homepage concrete tab and press detail application or launch um, let's create a new project and <clears throat> we will we can start so uh the concrete is c4555 uh concrete cover 25 millimeters i won't use any templates but use the general input because the geometry of this discontinued region is quite easy simple so uh it will be done in 
seconds. So we have the geometry, it's empty, so I need to add a wall element. Let's define the dimensions. So the width will be six, um, 600 millimeters, uh, 650 millimeters height, in meters sorry uh, the thickness will be one meter uh, since we this is a, a continuous corbel I uh, assess the transverse direction um, as a one meter common one meter so we have the wall then we need to create the L shape. So I will add an opening, set the right dimensions. So the width will be 0 0.250 and the height will be 0 0.400. And by the master point and insertion, insert point, I uh, shift. Uh, this opening to the right position and now it looks exactly the same as uh, the cross section in the beam application. Then uh, I'm going to add another entity and this will be bearing plate. We need to define the bearing plate because via this transverse device we're going to distribute the forces, the loads to this concrete detail. Um, the dimensions will be as follows. Thickness 10 millimeters and let's put it here on the edge number five and it will be three, I think not one, 150 from the left edge of this edge number six so now it's okay and we can continue notice that uh, there is a warning that the structure is not um, it is not uh, it cannot be calculated because it is statically overdeterminate so we need to define supports some boundary conditions and the question is how to support this detail uh, because um, it is um, indirectly supported corbel. So for that cases, uh, we have a special type of support and it is called a patch support. So I will choose this one and um, we just need to locate it into the concrete detail. So uh, I'm going to use uh, master point number four and set the right X and Z coordinates. So it will be 0 0.05 and minus 0 0.05. Okay. And the effective radius will be set to uh, 50 millimeters as well. Um, this patch support um, looks like or uh, works like this that um, it is located somewhere um, in the concrete volume and based on the effective radius which we uh, just uh, defined um, internally there are bonds uh, which are created and uh, within this radius uh, you or the, the software the program uh, create the proportional load transfer bond to the reinforcement uh, uh, if you are interested more about uh, the supports and how should i uh, create the right boundary conditions. We had a webinar in um, last year, I think. So this was briefly how patch support works. 
let's copy this one and create another one since we need to um, have a statically determinate or indeterminate structure. So I will change the master point for number three, this one, and just modify the x coordinate and it would be this is minus 0 0.3 so now it is symmetrical the radius is set to 50 millimeters and i think the model is done and we can proceed notice that we have uh, some warning here that there is no reinforcement reference to a patch support this will be uh, modified uh, or fixed in a in a minute while we were while we were defining the reinforcement. So let's go to the loads and add some load cases and combinations. So the first load case will be permanent. The second one will be variable. I will uncheck this because I would like to analyze combinations only. The first combination will be uh, for assessing ultimate limit state. The second combination will be for assessing serviceability limit state. It will be characteristic combination. And the third one will be SLS quasi-permanent. Uh, let's uh, set the combination rule later and first define uh, the load FX. So I am in LC1, go to second tab, load impulses and adding a point load. This point load will uh, be set to value 15 kilonewtons. This is uh, exactly the same value as in IDEA Statica beam. If I switch to IDEA Statica beam, line loads, and go to um, load effects, uh, here we have 15 kilonewtons per meter. Uh, since we have a corbel, Y, one meter wide, it is uh, 15 kilonewtons. Then we can add another point load, and this time it will be in an X direction, and it will be 20% of the vertical load. So uh, that would be uh, three kilonewtons. Um, this is some code uh, dependent value or code recommended value that there should be some uh, the horizontal loads as well. Uh, so I used this recommendation. And there's one more thing. Uh, in the code, you can also see that there is eccentricity. Um, so I will define uh, eccentricity uh, on this uh, bearing plate for both um, for both load effects. This eccentricity can represent some uh, imperfections, geometric imperfections, manufacturing ones, or uh, at the construction site, uh, some um, imperfections. Okay, so uh, then we will switch to LC2 and define the same set of the loads but different values. Uh, minus 19, again, the eccentricity will be global Z and another point load this time it will be minus 3.8 global x and the same eccentricity okay so the loads are defined let's proceed to combination so i'm here at this uh, c1 combination click on this blue pen and here we can define partial partial factors so uh, 1.35, 1.5 for ULS, 1.1 for characteristic, and here we will have only 60% of, sorry, of, of uh, variable load. So I click OK, combinations are done, and we can proceed 
further to reinforcement design. So I will click on this input edit button and no reinforcement is here. So let's add some group of bars. Uh, it's going to be the vertical stirrup and I will use different uh, type for the definition of the shape on more edges. This is very convenient to do it. And I will simply define the edges uh, 4163. Uh, these edges defines the shape of the reinforcement and by these hooks I will also specify or this hooks oh this hooks uh, I will specify the anchorage special anchorage types at both ends and this profile should or diameter should correspond to the stirrup in the longitudinal direction and I know there is 14 millimeters it is one meter wide corbel so I have a, a distancing per 200 millimeters so uh, I will define five pieces of the stirrups in one layer and now uh, this is the, the important part I will check this box and interconnect uh, these tie or this stirrup to a patch load patch support. Then I will simply copy this um, group of bars, change the edges and define the horizontal tie and the edges will be mm, one, four, five, two in, in this direction. Okay, anchorage is here in the compression, same as here. And uh, here I will set a lower diameter, eight millimeters, five pieces. Let's check it in real 3D. So, oh, here it is. This is our discontinued region and uh, the reinforcement layout, bearing plate and patch support. Okay, so now everything is defined and I can analyze this D region. But before I do this, uh, I will go to setup and set a thinner uh, mesh since this is quite small um, uh, detail and I would like to have a, a have a better mesh or may I make it more dense so the setup is done and right now or in a second we will run the CSFM analysis <clears throat> so nonlinear analysis is running. The loads are uh, applied in steps. And I can see the results. So this is uh, a summary. So we can see everything here. Uh, and uh, we are interested in the stress in the reinforcement. So here we have uh, stresses in a concrete. Uh, concrete is acting only in the compression. So we can see the stirrups, some node error. And if we click on reinforcement, we can check the utilization of the reinforcement and uh, the stresses uh, in the group of bars. So first we are looking we are checking the GB1, which is the vertical tie. And we can see that the utilization is about 25%. So if I switch to presentation and remind you the results from Ideastatica Beam, 
uh, there was 72% of utilization for longitudinal shear and torsion. And in the transverse direction, we see that we have around 25%. So uh, in total, uh, it is uh, this stirrup is utilized, utilized to uh, 98%, so almost 100. So we can say that this is a perfect economic um, design and we can be happy about these results. If you uh, wish to, or if you prefer uh, more reserve, uh, we can also uh, make the stirrups more dense. Uh, right now it is designed for um, stirrups of diameter 14 millimeters, uh, 200 millimeters spared. So or distant, so we could have it more dense and uh, create a bigger reserve. <clears throat> so let me go back to uh, detail application and let's check um, let's check the utilization of the horizontal tie. Uh, here we can see that it is around uh, forty five percent. So this is uh, really satisfying. It could be even lower diameter, but it's eight millimeter right now, so I wouldn't go for a um, lesser diameter. So we can say that this indirectly supported corbel is um, designed and checked, and it satisfies uh, all uh, ULS and SLS. Um, combination. Let me just go briefly uh, through the these steps. So idea static detail, detail can also check the anchorage of the tie so we can see that everything is okay. And these uh, remaining three tabs are connected to serviceability limit states. The first is uh, stress limitation. Uh, these co continuous corbels are not as stressed as the local ones, so the uh, stresses are um, really low and, and okay. And also we can uh, look at the cracks. Uh, so around the reinforcement, uh, the crack can occur. So we can expect the cracks at the upper fiber of the of this um, console or also here at the uh, at this critical uh, vertical tie. So that would be uh, all from detail application. And we will go back to presentation. And uh, this is the last uh, point of uh, the practical demonstration. Um, solving this corbel by strut and thigh method. So um, I borrowed this uh, strut and thigh model, uh, make some assumptions and based on the geometrical conditions and the assumption that BB is equal to this uh, distance between these two legs of the stirrup and based on acting forces, a vertical one and horizontal one, I uh, derived these two equations for uh, the forces, for the tensile forces in in the vertical tie and in the horizontal tie. And based on known um, reinforcement layout, which was designed in detail, and known uh, uh, cross-sectional area of the reinforcement, uh, we can easily uh, define or calculate stresses in the reinforcement. So I substituted into these equations and uh, got these results and then uh, compare them with outputs from CSFM implemented in detail. And um, the results are more or less the same. We can see a good compliance in the vertical uh, stirrup detail gives oh, 115 megapascal, uh, while in uh, strut and tie model we have 110 megapascal. Then we have um, uh, slightly different uh, values in the vertical tie. 
236 and 270 megapascal from strand anti. This can be explained uh, by the sensitivity on this lever arm, on this uh, value Z. While here in strat and tie, uh, we uh, did the assumption that um, the node is shifted to the uh, centrate of longitudinal reinforcement and is slightly uh, higher. Uh, we got slightly lesser value of um, inner arm Z then in detail if we switch to detail and i will turn on the results uh, from the uls combination you can see that uh, this area these um, two two uh, struts which um, are somewhere here and the compression is uh, located at this uh, edge, uh, we can say that this lever arm is um, higher and that's why uh, we got a bit um, less value like one, 236 megapascal since we have a bigger Z. Uh, we could also uh, do some iteration and maybe modify uh, this uh, strut and tie model and get slightly different values but this is uh, the pitfall of this uh, method that there are several solutions and uh, they are correct or we cannot say that they are not correct okay so uh, this uh, was um, the, the, that was the last slide okay. uh, and right now we have a second survey for you or Paul yes so, so uh, so you saw uh, how you can efficiently work with idea statica detail and 75% of you said in the first poll that you are using strut and tie method so there are some advantages and disadvantages of this classical method and I would like to ask you what do you see as the biggest pitfall of your current usual workflow? So please uh, select your answers if you have some pains uh, using uh, your uh, uh, strat and tie spreadsheets or hand calculations. You can uh, select uh, multiple answers. So maybe you may be absolutely fine with your current workflow. So this is the uh, last uh, answer for you or it may take too much time or you may not be sure how to define the strut and tie model because there is uh, let's say many options how to do it uh, you may find some uh, difficult uh, interpretation of results but this is mostly for 3d fine elements analysis or any other modification or optimization may be difficult because if you've already finished your hand calcs and then you need to change something it may be uh, very uh, painful. So I would ask the rest of you to vote. I will give you, I will give you uh, uh, ten more seconds. So please vote, and we will see your answers. Okay. So I'm closing the poll right now, and let's share the results. Okay. So we have quite balanced uh, results uh, yeah as there were multiple answers so it's about 25 one quarter of you answered every option so uh, it takes too much time uh, definition of the model uh, yeah difficult interpretation of results optimization is difficult and 24% of you don't have any problem so it means that 75% of you uh, has a problem. So I, I'm not sure if those 75% are the same uh, uh, who are using the start and time method and this 24% you don't have problem because you don't have such a task. We will see. Okay. So thanks for your answers and uh, Petra will continue with her presentation. Thanks. So 
<clears throat> I believe this is the last uh, slide of um, this presentation, or at least my last slide. And this would be the comparison, or maybe um, summarizing of uh, CSFM and uh, Strat and Tie method. So um, uh, I can, or we can say that uh, we can design and check of indirectly supported corbels via both methods. So uh, we can say that the design is uh, safe. Uh, maybe uh, when using strat and tie, uh, we should be cautious about um, uh, the selection of the right or uh, the correct uh, strat and tie model because some models can be at the dangerous side or cannot be the exactly the the right ones. <clears throat> then uh, the results. Uh, yes, so yeah, and, and yeah, then the results are more or less the same, so that's why we can say that both are safe. Uh, when we talk about efficiency, um, you could see that in a Idiostatica detail, I uh, design and check this uh, discontinuity region in a minute, while in a, uh, when using strata and time method, uh, it's not exactly an effective approach. It's very time consuming and uh, very often you need to do more iterations. So it means you need to start over. So uh, it really uh, takes much more time than using CSFM. Um, what about the economic part? Um, since the strut and tie is a strat and thigh method is based on uh, ultimate limit state and we do some assumptions of reaching yield strength both in concrete or in reinforcement uh, it's uh, not the the real uh, state or, or real behavior of the structure so uh, it's not exactly the economic uh, approach then we have this uh, question about the the unique solution while detail offers or provides unique solution, we have the behavior in correspondence to acting loads in correspondence uh, with some assumptions uh, that concrete does not act in, uh, in tension and uh, the, the tensions are transferred via reinforcement, which is uh, perfectly or properly uh, defined. Uh, in strat and tie, uh, models, uh, we cannot uh, surely say what model is the right one, what is the best one, uh, and there are a lot of models which can be the right ones in some cases or in some discontinuity regions. There are even um, uh, approaches where you need to combine like two uh, strut and tie models in order to catch uh, everything or to design all the ties. So we cannot say that the strut and tie method provides a unique solution. And uh, SLS checks are um, really important, are sometimes governing in the D regions. So it is extremely the important assess also uh, the serviceability limit state of the structure and know the deformation and the cracks the cracks of the concrete which is not unfortunately possible uh, uh, to do via a strut and tie model uh, since the, th the whole theory is based on uh, assessing ultimate limit state so uh, looking at this summary, uh, CSFM looks pretty good and suitable uh, for uh, checking uh, discontinuity regions. So I believe that was the last slide and now is the time for your questions. 
thanks Petra and I will go through the questions and uh, we will try to answer them. So there was a mm -hmm. question uh, if the detail works with ACI codes. Yes, detail works with ACI. So you may select uh, between your codes and ACI. So uh, it's yes, at the beginning. Yes. Yeah, I've, I'm sorry I forgot to to mention it. Uh, it was it was at the beginning when we are creating a new project. Um, I had the design code Eurocode, but the 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 principle of the modeling and checking is the same for ACI, and also you will find uh, the particular. Uh, concrete and reinforcement material corresponding to ACI. Okay, great. Uh, there was also a question about previous webinars. Uh, uh, one uh, attendee asked uh, about the support. So uh, maybe I will show it for everyone where you can find recordings of webinars. If you go uh, to our web, ideastatica.com, on the, on the top you have support and learning and you can select webinars and then you can just add a keyword like detail supports and here's the topic how to define supports in rc structure csfm so i would recommend for all of you who are interested in this model how to define different types of supports including the patch support so here at the bottom you will find the recording so this is about the webinar and also if you if you are looking for anything else you can find in the support and learning okay i will switch you back to my presentation uh other questions other questions uh can we have a strain diagram for concrete and steel in the extreme fiber of concrete and steel maybe petra you can show in the results when you can see also strains uh for also for the other users Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I just need to share the screen again. Share the screen. So yeah. um, the results uh, are separated. You can look at the uh, values uh, in concrete and reinforcement separately. So first I'm here at concrete and you can see the utilization uh, if we switch here in results to stress sigma c, we can see the stresses. And if you are looking, if you are interested in strains, uh, then you can simply switch to strain. And the same is for reinforcement. So if I switch to reinforcement, and I have even more possibilities. So first, uh, again, the utilization. And if I'm interested in stresses, I switch to uh, sigma s button and i can see here i can see everything and here i see uh the, the current entity and if if i need to know the strain i switch to strain and here we have the strains the legend and everything and okay. if you are I'm not sure if 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 this is satisfying also here in materials and models you can see the stress strain diagrams for concrete, which are entering the, the analysis. The blue one is the, the one which is um, codependent, and the, the red one is the one with compression softening, which is automatically calculated in the software. And the same is for reinforcement. This is the input the diag diagram. And uh, if uh, it is reinforcement, we calculate with uh, tension stiffening effect. So this um, red curve is the one that enters the analysis. Is that okay, the answer? Yeah, okay. I think so. If if not, please uh, add another question and we'll try to answer it. And also the last question I've got in my list is one attendees missed first 10 minutes and he's asking for a recording. If there will be a recording, yes. 
The answer is yes, there will be a recording. Uh, this webinar is recorded and we will send you uh, an email to all attendees and registrants with the link. Uh, it, it will take us about a day to process it. And uh, in the future, you can find it in the webinars section on our web. So uh, th all the webinars are on our web as I've shown you before. So that's it. I will uh, switch screen. Uh, take the presenter back to me and show my screen. Do you see my screen, Petra? Yes, I can see the questions okay. and answers. So questions are finished. So our webinar is uh, it will be over soon. So I would like to ask all of you to fill our short survey after the webinar. Uh, uh, we will be happy for your feedback. Uh, you can write uh, topics you are interested in and we can uh, prepare a next webinar uh, considering uh, your uh, your points and your recommendations. So uh, please fill it and it will be very good for us. As I already mentioned, uh, there will be a recording till tomorrow and all webinars are on our web on, on YouTube as well. And for those of you who are interested in Idea Statica and you want to uh, evaluate by yourself, you can get a free trial. Uh, it's on our web. Uh, if you get to, if you go to ideastatica.com, uh, top right-handed corner, there is a big orange button, get a free trial. So do not hesitate uh, to test it, download it, and you will get a full version for 14 days. There is no, no limitation in the version. And also uh, you can use our support center as I shown you before for anything you want to know. Uh, there is a lot of lot of great articles and uh, 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 questions and answers, so use it as well. Um, I would like to also invite you for the next webinar. It will be the release webinar because we are releasing the version 21.1 in October and you will uh, see all the news, all the features which are coming in the new version. There will be a plenty of uh, new features uh, either in concrete and uh, steel. So uh, we are happy to see you on this uh, webinar. And also uh, there are some interesting webinars from the past. Uh, you can also see the webinar uh, which is focused on ACI and there is a column with bracket. Yeah. So as I uh, mentioned before, all the webinars are on our web. So that's everything for today. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, attending uh, this webinar and uh, we are looking forward to see you on the next, next session next time. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you for your time. Bye.